Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. You oh, might have uh, heard her name uh, in the last couple of uh, months and oh, weeks Jesus. all over the news. No, we're not Jesus. starting there. We're not doing that. She has a new book. I'm talking about because of her I'm book. Trying to start with the book. <laughs> I'm talking okay. about you know, her like, first name of all... is out there because of the book. <laughs> oh, okay, just making sure. Small doses, which is out right now. Yes. Amanda Seals. Good morning. You know they already like ah, she back on the show again. Uh, they always got her up there because uh, I'm always you're doing, always doing shit. something exactly. Ba bum bum. <laughs> Well, Amanda has a new book out right now called Small Doses. That's right. Now, I, I know the title of your podcast is Small Doses. Let Why? me just say something. Yes. I don't want this to be an easy interview. Oh, you think this is going to be easy? I don't, I'm just telling you. I don't want it to be. Okay. Because has it, has I, it been no easy? Um, well, because you love me. Yes. Like, yes. Y'all, like, so I think sometimes people are like, oh, they go easy on her because they family or whatever. No. Okay. So let's I got on a onesie. I'm ready for war. You got a onesie? What is, That's your fighting outfit? You fight outfit? <laughs> onesie? You know, all I need is my Hattori Hanzo sword. Okay. So I just want, you know, because I I really have been doing, like, press all out the wazoo this year. Okay. And I feel like that sometimes ends up, like, doing bad or good for you or whatever. But when I come here, I don't consider it press. Like, okay. I come here and I consider it like... Conversation amongst family. Conversation amongst family. But I consider it almost like a forum. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that, like, come at me, bro. It is hard with you. It is, it is hard when you interview your friends, though, because it's like, I know how we talk off the air. And we should keep that off the air. Okay, just making sure. All right. But <laughs> however, you know, I think that there are things that may need to be addressed. Got gotcha. you. And I'm ready to address whatever. So we'll get to that. But first, Small Doses. My book is so exciting. Why is why do you name Small Doses? Why the podcast name Small Doses? Why the book? Because it don't seem like you do anything small. Well, because I'm a, I'm a truth teller and the truth hurts. And so a lot of times we need it in small doses. Got you. And so, you know, I try to, throughout the book, give it to you in different sizes. So there's essays, there's stories, there's blurbs, there's lists, there's poems. But at the end of the day, it's basically a life guide for anybody who's socially conscious and aware and trying to get there. If they ain't there already trying to get there. And I do that through humor and through common sense. Now, we also every time you come up here, you always talk about people that don't like you or they always say it has something negative to say. Why, Why do you think that is? Do you think they can only take you in small doses? Or yeah, what? I think there's a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. If we're being honest, like I think, I think some people don't like me for the reasons that they don't like themselves. I think some people don't like me because of how I've approached certain situations with them personally. I think some people don't like me because of information or you know gossip that they've heard from other sources. Mm-hmm. I think some people don't like me because. I'm very light skinned and they feel I have no place to speak about the black woman experience or about the black experience or to the black experience. I think some people don't like me because I'm a woman with a very strong point of view and an opinion. Mm -hmm. And what they consider to be someone being stubborn is really someone who's just sure of herself. I think some people don't like me because I may reflect something that they desire Mm -hmm. that they have yet to like make happen. I think that there's a number of reasons that People don't like me. And what's crazy is that it was a really long, like when I, like what I've experienced recently with this internet shit, like it could take you out. Like if I was somebody with a different set of people around me, or if maybe my chemical mind was different, like my, the the way that my chemical balance in my brain was different, like I may not have made it out of that. Social media is bad for your mental health. It'll Mm -hmm. definitely drive you to that brink. At times. 1,000%. And because it's like, it fucks with your perception of reality. Yes. You know, and like, it can be really trippy when an entire swarm of energy, you know, when you at church and they be like, okay, let's all pray for for Sister Seals, you know, and send our energy towards (laughs) her. You know, what that, because what that really is, is like, let's all as a group send energy in a direction towards somebody for healing, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's a power for, there's a power in energy. So when they, when you go viral in the wrong way on these internets, it's like the adverse of that. It's mm-hmm. literally like let's all send toxicity 
towards this person in the same direction. And it's very, very easy for people to say things like, why do you care? Or for people to say things like, I mean, you famous, what'd you expect? Or for people to say like, why, why can't you just ignore it? And it's like, well, one, I'm not a sociopath, mm -hmm. so. You feel. <laughs> I feel. You're probably an empath, because you're a cancer. I am a true empath, so, I, and even if I want to like protect myself from those things, I still have a consciousness and a self-awareness about like, well, let me make sure that I'm not doing the things that mm -hmm. these people are saying. Like maybe, ma let, me ma let me do a self-check. But it gets so overwhelming and people take so much joy mm -hmm. in, um, in pulling that trigger. It, it's, it's like it becomes frightening to you that like, why, why would people want you to hurt so bad? Well, a lot of that is because of what you said earlier. It's because of uh, what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You got HBO stand-up specials and you on but Insecure I don't think that and you Small Funny and Black is selling out and you got books. I don't think that way. And that's so frightening to me that we think that way, that like someone's doing too much. That's, a, that's always been mm -hmm. the issue with Amanda. She's just too much. But do you think, you think people don't understand your grind, never seen your grind, don't it, understand what you've been through? 1,000%. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I have worked my ass off, mm -hmm. so I don't know. And and I think that for people to say they don't understand my grind, it's like, well, it's out there. You know, like mm -hmm. if anything, it's documented. Like I've been at this for a long time, but I think, you know, a lot of that stuff I can shake off. But when it's coming out all at once, like you have to somehow figure out how to compartmentalize it and it can feel indomitable. Like it really can feel like you just can't get past it. And I was low. I almost let these motherfuckers make me forget who I am. Almost. Well, let's talk about mean? that, though. Let's talk. Well, yeah, continue. Yeah, what do you, what what do you, do you mean? mean? Because we live in a in an era where I'm really I'm really frightened in general for the fact that I think a lot of, especially within the black community, I think a lot of us can't tell the difference between our villains and our warriors. Mm. I think that a lot of us are not able to tell the difference between fact and fiction. Mm -hmm. Especially on the internet. On the internet. I think that we are in an era where we are we are almost scarily uh, obsessed with like opinion-based blogs versus fact source journalism. Mm -hmm. And that is very scary because people make their opinions based on a number of things. Right. And we live in a, in, a, in a nation where media right now is controlled by money, by clicks. So, like, I've been the victim of literally just someone making up some shit just so people will click. So they've made money off of lying about me. Mm -hmm. And that is, like, an insane thought process to me because I am so about just, like, keeping it a buck in a like even if you feel like oh she's always negative it's like but i'm i'm addressing something that is negative in order for us to get to the positive like that's actually the journey i'm taking mm -hmm. and so sometimes i get frustrated that that's being mis misnomer like this is my way of love but we live in an era where there's just a wild obsession with creating conflict versus quelling it yes and it's it's like i had such an awakening in these past 2 weeks because I, I couldn't believe how people took something that was so basic to me, which is like, don't put each other in wild situations for no reason other than our own personal reasons. Like, we got to think bigger. We got to think brighter. We got to think broader. And it turned into like, fuck her. She's a bitch. And it's like, where y'all even getting this from? Like, I'm a bitch because I say something that makes you uncomfortable. Like, I didn't eat a baby. I didn't fuck your man. I didn't shit on your mother. Like, I don't, I don't. Niggas is really eating babies. I'm just saying. I've been hearing that term so much. I'm like, because <laughs> because that's like, <laughs> because that's all, like, but I just like I'm just like I I don't know I don't know how being unabashedly smart has become such a villainous thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how being unabashedly like on point with how I want my 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 brand, how I want my work, how I want my quality control to be, how I want my space and my the men in my life to behave around me, how I want my friends to be. I don't know when that became like, fuck her. You know, like mm -hmm. anybody who has some shit to say about me, I'm like, if you was in the situation I was in when, when this person was talking, how they're talking, you would have done the same thing that I said. You would have probably said the same shit to that person that I said. And I just think that it, I'm getting emotional. But the point of the matter is this. 
a lot of people misnomer anger and a lot of misnomer a lot of people misnomer passion as anger and i have a shirt like i have a whole thing that says like i'm not hostile i'm just passionate mm -hmm. and i think so many black women we identify with this but then we'll point the finger at each other and that hurts me mm -hmm. and i think so many black men like are misnomered as thugs you know for for being able to express themselves or you know being able to ha you're so articulate you know and it's like oh my god and it's like when we acknowledge when we see that in other women sometimes it's like we're not supposed to do that so have you ever have you ever looked at because you know this this narrative about Amanda Seals has been around for a long time. Yeah, Amanda Seals got a bad attitude. Yeah, Amanda Seals is difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. Amanda Seals is just a terrible person. Have you ever stepped step step back and said, okay, what did I do in this situation yes. that made people feel that way? Do that all the time. So I think, for one, I think if we look at like the hundred percent of that, there's probably about five percent of those situations where like, yeah, I owe you an apology, mm -hmm. and I've done that. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I think for the rest of the folks, and this is not, I'm, and I, it's not even, it's, this is not conceit or cockiness. This is somebody who has really sat here and looked at this. I think really like one, people do not like to be corrected, mm -hmm. even if they're working for you, <laughs> even if they're working for you and they're doing things like they don't like to be corrected. They don't like to be corrected by women. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing where if you're the talent, like people don't want to hear it from you. Mm -hmm. Like even if your manager or your publicist or your agent says the exact same thing as you, it's like, yeah, but you're not allowed to say it because that's not the rules. And everybody knows, like, I don't play by the rules. Mm -hmm. Like, the the type of person I am to create the art that I do, I would never be a rule follower. Like, the two things don't happen in the same space. So, in terms of, like, am I a terrible person? That's absolutely ridiculous and absurd. Like, and if, if we're measuring that, I'm like, well, what kind of meter are y'all measuring that on? Like, so, there's people that we can acknowledge are 100% terrible people. R. Kelly is a terrible person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so I'm R. Kelly now? Like, get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. That's, but that's the stuff that trips me. Because I'm like, wh where do we go? How do we get this far where, like, our meter is so disparate that we only have, like, the saint of Beyonce and the terrible of R. Kelly, and there's no middle, you know? Mm -hmm. And... I think context matters in situations like that, though. Because but people Kelly, don't have context. Yeah, R. Kelly is the extreme of just being a terrible human just because he's But no one a cares about human. context. But I'm, like with you, I think they say, uh, I don't know, maybe it's what you're talking about. You work with somebody, you correct them. Or you tell them they yeah. live in foul. Or you might... When did I, I tell know. someone they were living foul? I don't know. I'm just using what language. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I'll... Okay, so I'll give you a situation. Like, I have approached someone and said, listen, I just want you to know everybody talking about you behind your back. Everybody in here has been talking about you behind your back for this particular situation. I know who that person is. And I'm going to come and keep it a buck with you because everybody's talking about you behind your back and I don't want nobody to do that to me, so I'm not going to have them do that to you. Correct. And so here's your opportunity to let you know, one, if this is true, I hope that you possibly shift from the decision you're making because it could have negative ramifications for a number of people, including yourself. Two, if it's not true, I hope that you... Um, understand that people do think it's true, and it may, it may be it may be on your plate to try and change, you know, the perception. Correct. I was told you shouldn't do that. Don't insert yourself in situations like that because you have now brought it onto yourself. And I'm like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, right. I break up domestic violence fights in public. Like, I'm the I'm a crusader. Like, I'm mm -hmm. the Green Beret. Like, I was the kid who was, you know, all with, like, flat-chested and, and made fun of. Like, I've, I've been bullied for everything. Like, mm -hmm. I've been bullied for your... your <laughs> I've been bullied by the white girls for being black. I've been bullied by the black girls for not being black enough. You know, I've been mm -hmm. bullied for all type of shit. I've been bullied for being smart. I've been bullied for being loud. I've been bullied for being West Indian. You name it. So, I do have it in me. Like, I want to protect people right. so how much of that how much of that trauma still existing because it could be a defense mechanism you might walk you a wish a motherfucker True. would person amanda i am a wish a motherfucker would person yes. 1000 percent. so is my mama yes, uh, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely a part of it and that's the work i do and i work on myself all the time and i'm in therapy and it's just like sometimes it it's just that the internet will trick you into thinking that the work you're doing isn't good enough. Right. Yeah, it's not like the work is not working. The work is not working. Yeah, like and you're you like, don't know yourself. Yes. And I said this on Big Boy, like, yo, if you're not careful, you will let the people that know the least about you convince you that you don't know you. Absolutely. Goddamn lutely. <laughs> and that is a mind fuck. That like, is a mind fuck. It's a mind fuck. Like, it's scary that people could take you there. I have a cat eye. I can't cry. Okay. 
It's scary that people. I can't cry. I have a cat eye, okay. so it's fine. Make it show. Sure, um, what are you prepared? I, it was very precise. So you can't. <laughs> you like I, I put a lot of effort. Um, so you can't. You can't let people. <laughs> take you there but this passion and this intensity that allows me to like create incredible work that allows me to write a whole book right. you know that allows me to continuously like put content out and have opinions on things from a fact-based place etc like that intensity doesn't just go away when people try to play me mm -hmm. that intensity doesn't just go away when i see someone getting played you know like it's still there like i i, I first of all i'm west indian so and I'm from Grenada. It's called the Isle of Spice. Not just because of nutmeg, but we're spicy, you know. Mm -hmm. We're spicy. I saw it firsthand. I was there. I, it was little simple things like Amanda ordering drinks from the waitress and they going back and forth. I'm like, are they about to fight? <laughs> like, what's happening here? Like, <laughs> but that's just how everybody in Grenada is. But you see, there was no beef, though, right? No. She bought the drinks. So so let, let's go to the, the, the Black Emmy party. You gonna jump all the way to that? Let's go. Let's go. Let's, he was waiting let's the whole there. time. Oh, it was double okay. dutch. I thought we were talking about that. Well, first of all, are, are you still on insecure? What kind of dumbass question is that? I'm just that asking. That is a dumbass. It's a dumbass question. question. I'm just Next question. <laughs> <laughs> See that? And that's the people will be like, Amanda got a bad attitude. She is, she does, but that, that was, was a, a dumbass question. That was a bad attitude. And she though. checked you I, on it in real I time. I like that. That was a bad attitude. I'm definitely going on the blog and saying that she has a bad attitude. No, Rashawn. I was just asking. Just a question now. But what happened at the Black Emmy party? In a nutshell, I was invited by somebody who was involved with the party. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the party with the intention of being a part of this black experience. Mm -hmm. And in Hollywood, we are so often like polka dots in a room, mm -hmm. you know? And I, over the weekend, like I went to our Comedy Central party. I went to the NBC party. I went to the HBO party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're there and you mingle. But we party different, mm -hmm. you know? And at the end of the day, like, I do feel like there's a black movement in Hollywood and I'm a part of it. Uh, like I, I am honored to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I was already just going there with the insight of like, I'm excited. I was telling people to go there. I was literally at other parties like, y'all, we, we need to get out of here and go celebrate our blackness. We need to go celebrate our blackness. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's people who are like, yeah, but why would you go if you know there might be dissension? Because I'm the type of person who thinks like, I literally was saying to myself like, even if you think something could go left, like this is bigger than that. Like, don't even get caught up in, like, that type of shit. Like, this is so much bigger than that. Like, the fact that we have a space, go be a part of that space. Mm -hmm. So I went there to be a part of that space. Even then, though the person, the, one of the promoters you knew did not like you. Well, I feel like as well, who a... who was the person that did not like no, you? No, we're not doing that. But I feel like <laughs> as Ask a, the questions. Don't take it easy on me. That's what you want. We're I'm glad she didn't say her name. I think she said her name too much. Okay. So I think that there's, um, I think there's a, 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 a time and place for things. Mm -hmm. Right. So like if it was a personal party, like a birthday party or something, I absolutely would not put myself in that space. Mm -hmm. But because I was invited to the party mm -hmm. by somebody who was also involved in planning the party, I thought there to be an understanding that this is an open space mm -hmm. for open love. So I didn't go there thinking like, OK, let me bob and weave. I went there like, you know, I'm not going to party with that person anyway. Correct. It's a big ass place, mm -hmm. you know? So we've all been to these. And I think a lot of people don't understand, like, this is a work party. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an industry event. Therefore, it is a work party. And so I just went there with those intentions. I went there with those intentions. And then um, I just met, I met some friction at the door. And I was confused as to why I was being denied entry. And so were a number of people. Like, but why? But why? But why? Because I'm not some I'm not somebody who's like on the fringe. Like at this point, especially within a black entertainment space, like I think people have acknowledged I have like significant contributions to this space. And so why wouldn't I be allowed to enjoy the other folks that have significant contributions and share with them? So Do you think that's a sense of entitlement? No, I think it's a sense of fact. Mm -hmm. It's a black Emmy party for black entertainment. I have my 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 special was on the Emmy ballot. So why would I? I agree with that, but I don't ever approach any situation like I I I, I should be here because of who I am. Like I'm the type of person if they tell me I can't get in, I'll be like, all right, fuck it. It's a little different. The black Emmy party. I all agree, the black people but listen, Hollywood. man, every, people act funny. Like she said, it's not a birthday party. And, it wasn't and a Christmas party. People act like funny and people like to shit on you in in ever, ever so subtle ways sometimes. So what about just to make the, themselves feel better? What about all the people that seen you outside and were walking in and out? Nobody said, you know what? I'm gonna hold my girl down. What the fuck is going on? Well, that was interesting. That was a lesson. That was a painful lesson. Um, there were people, but there were others who didn't, and I will remember that forever because I'm a cancer. 
Um, but, <laughs> but no, there were absolutely individuals. I mean, I got in the party because someone who was involved with the party was like, why are you out here? Come inside. Mm. And brought me in the party. So that's when I say, when I see shit like she snuck in the party. I'm like, so y'all spent like weeks making jokes about some shit that didn't happen. They say you, you bum rushed the door. I, I don't even know how to bum rush. Nah, you know how to bum rush. You've lived in New York. I could bum rush and if I had 12 waxes MOP. behind oh, okay. me. Okay. <laughs> okay? I walked up with one person and my homegirl in real estate. That's not a bum rush, okay? Like, no, you go, if you bum rush and you come in with a squad, you come in like Onyx, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's last days out here. No, I didn't bum rush. I literally walked up to the rope and then was let in and then was told, no, you got to get out. So I was let in. And then told you got to get out. So where's the person that walked you in at that time? So then somebody came out and walked me in. So we walked in and we we walked in and I went and stood by the bar. Because at this point I'm like, okay, glad that's over. Mm -hmm. Went and stood by the bar. And that's when a security guard approached me. And was like, I'm sorry, miss, we have to ask you to leave. And I was like, ask me to leave? What are we talking about? And he was like, yeah. And I said, find out who wants me to leave. So he found out who wanted me to leave. And he let me know. And then three other security guards approached. And I think that it's real easy to like read a blog story and where people like purposely, you know, leave out details because it's it's juicier or whatever. But and people think like, oh, it's a party. Like, why is she so stressed about a party? I'm stressed because I'm a black woman and Four men surrounded me to remove me from somewhere that I belonged. Right. That's why I'm stressed. I'm stressed because I didn't even have a nigga there with me to hold me down in that situation. I'm stressed because I know that another woman has put me in this situation. And that stresses me out for a number of reasons because I'm also stressed out for her because I'm like, damn, what, what are you dealing with that would cause you so much pain to put me in this so much pain? So I'm there. I'm stressed because a security guard put hands on me and I can't put hands back. Because for obvious reasons. So I would love to bum rush the security guard, but I can't. So, so many of us have been in those situations so many times where we're helpless, where we can't, we don't have any, any way to fight. And so you end up just feeling like worthless and humiliated. You see people around you watching you in this situation, people who you would have helped in a second do nothing. And you feel like, what is this? Like, this is what I've, this is what I've worked and grinded like my whole sh shit to get to, to get to be in these spaces and these safe spaces and enjoy and celebrate. Mm -hmm. And then so to be shit on like that is a very multi-layered experience. It's and a black thing. You're supposed to feel safe around your people. If you don't feel period. safe around your people, where do you feel safe? And that's why, you know, and that's why I asked you, you know, you took it as a joke of insecure is because if I'm outside and I see somebody that I fuck with or I work with outside and they're having a problem, well, we that all was have a, a problem. And that, so and that's this why is I the thing. They, so this is another thing. Like people make conflict where there isn't. I never at any point said that my co-stars saw me mm. and decided not to help me. I never said that. Yeah, they said it was a whole. And I had a whole table. They did have a table, but that doesn't mean they saw me. It's yeah, a club. Yeah, right. The table could be back around the corner that and was behind the DJ that's why booth. I asked. You know, I, I couldn't because see you outside or Charlemagne or never. You, you wouldn't. Like, nah, you like, literally, you've literally done that. Well, in you know, I stopped the music in a club. No, nobody's part until my people get in. That's, but that's me. So I never said that. There's a bunch of shit I've never done that I get taken L's for all the time. I've never, I never said that. You know, I've, I've never, I've had people do entire videos about like Amanda Seals thinks she's better than black Americans because she's from the Caribbean. I have never said anything even remotely resembling that. Also, I'm black American. My father is a nigga from Boston. My, you know, like <laughs> the descendant of slaves from Arkansas. What are we fucking talking about? You'll learn that in small doses. There you go. Like, I, I have never said I think I'm prettier than anybody because I'm light-skinned. Are you fucking, really? Mm -hmm. Like, even when we talk about those narratives, it's like, how do we get to a place where we forget that it used to be legal to rape people in this country? And so a number of us are, are dis legal to rape black people anywhere. Like, that was like a thing. So a lot of us are descendants of that. You're basically tired of being misunderstood. I'm so Absolutely. tired That's of all it. That's it is. Cause it's because it's, it's willful. It's willful, and I'm tired of it. And I'm on here just being honest with you and vulnerable, and I know they're still going to be like, she a crybaby, fuck y'all. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, like, everybody is so afraid to be real, and I keep mm -hmm. it a buck all the goddamn time. And a lot of the people that y'all love ain't even shown you real. 
They're showing you two seconds of something that they have mm -hmm. curated and, and manicured. And I'm showing you my hair crazy. I be showing you about a pool. I showing you in an alleyway in a gown after getting kicked out of a party. And yet that's not being lauded by so many people. But I will say with this book, the book tour, like the signings have been so beautiful because when you get in front of like actual humans, they that, remind you. Yeah, because you get the you get the, the the bum rush of love instead of the bum rush of hate. Well, and it's in a real energy space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not coming behind like you know Slick Rick two twenty five, who's you know Avi is you know a cig a, a frog smoking a cigar, who's right. telling you like you dumb bitch, who the fuck do you think you are? But I need to just say like, there's a lot of narratives about me that are, have been spread this year, and it's been wild because in the same time, the beginning of the year, you asked me like yo, like, how excited are you that this is actually happening with your special? How happy are you? And I cried. And when I cried, I cried not just because I was relieved that I was finally getting to do this, but also because I knew that with the fame was about to come a whole bunch of shit that I don't It's only going like. to get worse. And it's only going to get worse. New levels, new devils. It's only going to get worse even now, after this book comes out. Oh, 1,000%. You hit the New York Times bestseller, it's gonna only going to get worse. Like, that's going to happen. I know, but people, but when you're dealing with the transition into that in front of people. Yes, yeah, there's no rule book to it. There's no manual that tells us how to handle this shit. You know, like. Especially in this era. I do want to ask one thing. Mm -hmm. You, you, I know people will watch this and they'll be like, okay, Amanda said, you know, these are the reasons, but what do you think you did to that young lady for her to feel that way towards you? I have no idea. Really? I have no idea. I don't. Have you spoken to her since? No, we haven't had a chance to speak, but I've opened up the space for it. Got you. Now, did one of your how's, it been on this, how's it been on the set of I was going to say, did one of your co-hosts say something? I think it put, put We're something We're not on even going to acknowledge that individual because he did that so that he could get acknowledged. No. Um, but know that I have looked out for him. Many a times. Have y'all had a conversation or no? There's no conversation to have. I've looked out though. I, no I, one... I'm good in my in my karma. My karma is good. When I saw that, I thought it was really Gator. I did. Gator? Yeah. What does that mean? Gator. That's the that's one of the characters that he played. The person I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was actually Samuel L. Jackson. I said, like, what the fuck is Samuel L. Jackson beef? Well, shut up, man. <laughs> you are so like, full of like, Remember when I told you that? I was like, yes. Because somebody sent it like, to me. Not I read it fast, man. I did. I glimpsed that. I was like, what? Samuel L. Jackson what the fuck? involved with this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, people do things for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. right? But, like, I feel like if you have my phone number, Check like, out. we, you know, we shouldn't have to do that on, on the internets. Um, and I've had to, like, one of my biggest regrets is I should have hit Chrisette Michelle directly. I shouldn't have hit her in the internet. I shouldn't have acknowledged that on the internet. I you, know have called, you know her? I know her enough to call her in and not call her out. Got yes. you, got you, got you, got you. So that's a regret I have. I should have done that. What other regrets does Amanda Seals have? When, tell me sometimes Amanda Seals knows she has gotten in her own way. Because that's another thing they say about Amanda Seals. Amanda's always getting in her own way. Yeah, but no one tells you how. Yes, mm -hmm. or what you're doing. What what does that look no like? No one can ever what tell you in how. Your way look, oh, in Even your when they say I'm like. difficult, I'm like, what does that mean? They say she doesn't listen. And I'm like, okay, so let's... So I have to listen to everybody all the time in order to be considered not difficult? I guess that's what they're saying. But that's not true. Because a lot of advice is good advice. Mm -hmm. And I listen to that. You've both given me good advice and shitty advice. Mm -hmm. Both of you. Absolutely. And, and, you've to and you've told us both when we're giving good advice and when we're giving good advice. <laughs> and by the way, when I give you good advice, I'll be like, yes. <laughs> she listened. <laughs> like you know, and you both asked me for advice, and I feel like I've been on the I've been on the nose sometimes, off the 100%. nose sometimes. You one sure. of the reasons I started going to therapy. Thank you. Because you literally told me so a couple few years ago. She, you was like, black men do not want to acknowledge that they're damaged. They don't want to acknowledge mm -hmm. their trauma, and they don't want to do the work to fix it. And I was like, well, I'm gonna prove Amanda wrong. <laughs> that means a lot to me that you even wanted to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that black men get mad at me for saying stuff like that because they think it's a challenge. They think it, they think it's a an accusation of finger bl blaming, pointing finger thing. And really what it is, is a plea. Because it's like, we want y'all to be healthy and happy and winning so bad because so many of us want to be with you so bad. And in order for that to happen, we need you to be healthy and we need you to be clear and we need you to have self-knowledge and self-love. How can I expect you to love me if you don't love yourself? Like, That's real. Basic. And I just, I just don't, I mean, one of the most hurtful things to me is this narrative that I hate black men. It's so wild. And, it's, and, and that it's based on like me calling out a brother that all of a sudden means I hate black men. It's like, I also love black women and I also love our community. And I would much rather us call us out than wait for the others to call us out.
We shouldn't have had to wait for R. Kelly to be prosecuted by some other means. We should have just handled that internally, you know? And I think that's something that I really feel strongly about. Like, I feel strongly about the fact that, like, we sh we are a community. We should be able to police each other without having to call the police. And I think that that comes on moral standing and ethics and, and us having a communal understanding of, like, right and wrong. And we've gotten so far from that. But I... What do you think? The I, think I've that gotten you hate? My, I think I've gotten in my own way by being more honest than I needed to be in certain situations. Like yes. being being more vocal than I needed to be in certain situations. Because of these, though. We got the microphones, we got the platforms. Like, we, yes. we think people want to hear from us. We really do. <laughs> and, and that's, and you know, and sometimes it's like, but no, I think that I've gotten in my own way by also having a naive perception of the room and thinking I'm in a safer space than I really am. Mm -hmm. And just kind of like being more open than I needed to, than I should have been. Like, I don't think I'm as strategic as I should be. And I, I think that's really the crux. When people say she's getting in her own way, it's like Amanda thinks shit is sweet. And it's not. <laughs> and that's how I end up getting in my own way a lot of times. It's like, I'm not operating, like, it's not even chess or checkers. Mm -hmm. I'm just like romping through a field of creativity mm -hmm. <laughs> and forgetting like, but they're playing chess. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. you should stop frolicking and sit down and make sure that they don't take your queen. You know, maybe, but time, listen, do we need to play games with each other? Though? That's my thing. Do black people need to play any no. type of game with and each I other? And I would love if we would stop because I don't. And that's why I get hurt all the time. Yeah. Because I don't. The you know, last time you was you was here and uh, you had your man with you, what, what did he say about it? Was he supportive when, when all this stuff was going on? He shot the club up. <laughs> As he should have. <laughs> As he should have. He was great. Okay. That's the most important thing. Man, that's all he gets. He was like, he, he, he's, he's watching this and he's like, oh <laughs> shit, it's my boy. He's like, he was great. He was great. Oh, damn, babe. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I like what you said. But the, 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 the gist of this conversation to me is, black people, we have to find a way to continue to be real with each other, teach each other, empower each other, but not hurt each other just yes. because we disagree with each but other. But it's hard. But like even even when you criticized um, Life Jennings and his song, right? Mm -hmm. He was really upset. And he felt like yo, they're trying to play me. But, I'm, but, but when he came up, he was like, "That's her opinion. That's his opinion. That's people's opinion." He feels like because he's an R and B artist and he has history in the song. game, he feels like you song. shouldn't be able to talk about him. That's incorrect. Because he's an artist and he has so much skin in the game, I think it's fair for us to have a certain level of expectation for his awareness of what his art does and how it can reach people. And this is a song that, if it's about S&M, it was misleading because the references were not S&M references, they were slave references. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. I just, and honestly, I told him, it's not even about the content to me. There's I just that. didn't like it. And then, like and then song. I also just feel like he's a better songwriter than yes, that. Yes, it's not a good I song. I think he, right? you know, it's and I think that at the end of the day, too, never forget I'm a comedian, mm -hmm. and it was funny, hilarious. The, the, I didn't know it was like when you played it. He didn't know what it was like. He was first. doing things in that song that were funny. Hop like a frog. Shumbaka ding ding. Like <laughs> that's funny, dog. Like that. Like we gonna act like that's not funny. Hilarious. That's hilarious. He said it was bars. Bikichi pikichi king. Like <laughs> donkey donkey kong. Like that's funny, dog. Like you. I wasn't, I was I wasn't. He said it was bars. I thought it was hilarious. I thought Amanda's reaction video was hilarious. I posted Amanda's reaction video. I had no idea whose song that was. But <laughs> even when I found out, I'm like, damn. I said, let me, I'm like, damn, but like I, you better than that. But, like, he, but he gets to be, I mean, listen, if you're an artist, you're sensitive about your shit. So I understand absolutely. why he would be hurt about absolutely. that. And there's a difference between people being critical of your art and being critical of your character. You know, because if they're judging your art based on, like, I'm not, I didn't judge him as an artist. I judged a song, mm -hmm. right? I didn't say like Life Jennings is an ain't shit artist who's mm -hmm. out here wasting his time. That's a whole different conversation. That's the conversation that be people having about me. Like people who don't know me be like, that's that bitch, get her the fuck out of here. Shut that light skinned yellow bitch down. Shut her down. And I'd be like, why are y'all so ardent about this? I'm also not gonna be shut down. But that was a song. Mm -hmm. It's a song. Like, if you don't like my book, you don't like my book. That doesn't mean you have to not like me. Maybe I just didn't hit it for you this go round. You know what I really realized? People really didn't like you. That's not true, though. We <laughs> got to stop you, I'm saying I'm that. I'm no, that's no, not, no, no, let me finish People do saying. like her. That's not no, true. People do, but why, why people take it the wrong way. When, when you had an incident and you talked about a man that you felt was taking advantage of women, right? Mm -hmm. And you said, you know what? I'm going to put my women on so they know it, what to expect. So they can look out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And women came and was like, nah. Fuck her. She's a fucking liar. And I'm sitting here like, all she's trying to do is put y'all on. 
to what happened to her and what she heard. And I was like, the fact that women are coming at at at, at Amanda now saying, nah, fuck that, she's a liar. I'm like, I'm like, damn it, man. Like, you can't even help somebody. You can't even save somebody or try to save somebody. And then it, 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 went, it went crazy. You should just say, I'm glad you saw it that way, Envy. Don't even. I am. I'm really glad you saw it that way. I saw it the same way. But does it stop me from loving my people? See, that's the Sometimes. trick. Does it? No, you, you th- this, no, I, no, I, I, will, I will always love my is, people, but boy, that, they make it hard. This, this is the trippy part. Mm-hmm. For everybody that don't like me, I still gotta love you, though. Like I still love my people. Cause you know better. Cause I know better, and I know that there are reasons you don't like me that were handed down to you in some situations. They were literally handed down by oppressive means. So in some situations, that's it. And when I say oppressive means, I mean by patriarchy. I mean by racism. I mean by classism, etc. You know, you don't like me because I can talk proper or something. You know, like if that's a source of ire for you, like I'm I'm like mad that somebody put it in you that that's a reason to not like me. Because that means that you think that I think I'm better than you simply because I speak a certain way or because I was educated a certain way. When really all I'm trying to do is figure out how I can get enough resources to make the, the to make the assets that I was able to have access to available to more folks, you know, but. That 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 whole situation tripped me out, too, because I was just like and that's what I mean by standing in my own way, because sometimes I'm like, damn, I just I didn't I didn't check the bus. I thought I was I thought I was doing God's work by literally just it's a PSA like this is what was told to me. I'm a vessel and the willingness of people to call me a liar, but to listen to like some blog writer just bar none is wild. Wild. People just write lies. Amanda Seals lied about where. But should you listen to anybody in situations like that? Or should you just take all the information and do what you can with it? Like, do you have I to form an opinion what, on these? You don't side? have to form an opinion. Yeah. Like, just look at it as like, I have been presented this. Now it is something in my file and I keep moving. But we are so in this, in this, this opinion based. We're not in an information age. We're in an opinion age. Everybody just forming shit based on their own perception. And we have like their own feelings and their own feelings. And we have so much resources for information. I have seen people come in my DMs in the last week telling me to kill myself. Lord have mercy. Kill yourself, you dumb bitch. You hate black men. Fuck you. Like furious, you know, and then you look on their page and they're like a systems analyst. (laughs) You know, it's not even like I can say like, oh, this is some some dude who don't know no better. or This is some ratchet chick who who's just trying to rile me up. No, it's a it's a bevy of people who just decide like they don't want to do research. And I think that that's a willful ignorance. That's a choice that I would rather wallow in this neck, in this toxicity and mudsling than actually take a second to disprove it. Because I would have more I'm have I'm gonna have more fun slinging the mud than I will yeah. actually knowing the truth. Right. And that is scary to me that we would rather sling mud than actually know the truth. Well, and nobody, there's so much truth we need to know about each other and ourselves. Well, nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. And that's what's trippy to me. I'm not that person. I'm always I am fucking Scolder and Mully. Right. Mul- <laughs> like, <laughs> Mulder and Scully. I'm Mulder right. and Scully. Like the truth is out there. I'm yeah. like trying to find it. But I wanted, my mom was like, you sure you should do the breakfast club? Because you know them people just be upset. Mama, no. come on, mama. And you know I better. was like, well, that's fam. And if people are upset, they're upset. But what I what I love about coming here is I feel like you have a very diverse audience of people that watch this and listen to y'all. Because y'all are a diverse group of people. And I know that if I want to, like, send messaging, this is a place that I will go to. Like, I'm not going to go to Anderson Cooper, you know, like. I'm going to come here. Yeah, and also, it's very important for people to know that these conversations happen off air. It's not like this this is is public perception and we're trying to make people be on our side. Like, no, we really trying to do the work. Like, if somebody comes out and says, Charlamagne, you hate black women, I got to call my my sisters and be like, okay, what am I doing to cause this narrative? And sometimes it's like, Nah, they flipping, they tripping, and sometimes it's like, well, actually, that was poor taste. And I'm fine with that, and but that makes me go back and correct my behavior, and it makes me be intentional. Yes. About how I treat my sisters and uplift my sisters. Now, here's the trippy thing, though. A lot of your ire comes from like situations that people have watched you have. Mm-hmm. A lot of the shit that's been coming at me is situations that people have not been a witness to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So I'm like, how? Like, Absolutely. You see me talk by myself on an Instagram. Yeah. Sometimes I'm angry. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm with the cats. You know, sometimes I'm singing a gospel version of Slob on My Night. Ooh, you ready for Sunday service? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> next, and also. And also. Mm-hmm. Really, y'all? We just letting this rot? What? Kanye? We just letting that go down? What? Don't make me shake my bun out. Uh oh. Now what? What? Now? Yeah, I thought your bun had something to say. Your bun started, like, it, started, it took because, on a life of its own for a second. Because I'm a villain. All right, let's talk about it. I'm a villain. We talked about it earlier. Go ahead. I'm a villain. Mm-hmm. But this brother, okay, has openly supported somebody who is a known villain to our community. Correct. Multiple times mm-hmm. in multiple arenas. Okay. And somehow. We are not catching on to the fact that he has now employed the the word of Jesus mm-hmm. to continue this narrative. It's not like he came over here and was like, my fault, y'all. Let me start doing Sunday service so I can repent for the misstep that I took mm-hmm. in going in that direction. Well, he, he, does, he doesn't think it's a misstep. I heard him that's on Zane Low. That's mm-hmm. my point. Mm-hmm. He doesn't. He has now simply added in this 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 spirituality uh, level mm-hmm. to support his troubling problematic narrative, and then he's on a mic saying things that are not true. So you don't think he's genuine? I think he genuinely believes that what he's doing is right. Mm-hmm. I think it is absolutely wrong. I think. Um... I think that we have seen the word of Jesus used to sway minds for centuries. Mm-hmm. I think it's hard though, right? It's a slippery slope when you're an artist, a public figure, because our lives are our commodities, right? So whatever we're going through in our lives, we are essentially selling. We put it in our music. If we're with, with God or we're dealing with mental health issues or we're dealing with relationship problems, whatever it is, we put it out there for the public to consume. So it's kind of hard. If that's what he's at in his life at the moment, of course he's going to have Jesus all in his music. Of course he's going to have Jesus all in his merch. Yeah, but then simultaneously at the same events, he's on the mic touting support for this person. Well, he's also, you can be ignorant too. You can be, you can be absolutely stupid while you're going see, through this whole see, spiritual journey. It's, it's, like it's, you said, it's a slippery slope because I believe that he's found Jesus and he's found a new awakening, but I love the fact that he's talking about it in front of people that might not ever go to church. I think he's always had Jesus. I mean, Jesus walked Jesus was one of his first things. Yeah, yeah. But, I think but he's now always he's had expressing Jesus. it so much more. This, that's all he's talking about. Which Doesn't I'm not mad at. And music, I can't, no secular music, anything. And I can't judge somebody's spiritual journey, but I just think that I think that blurring the lines of the two is dangerous as mm-hmm. a messaging. And I think that when you're a public figure, there is a certain level of awareness that you have to have for how you're presenting messaging. And those two things happening at the same time is very reminiscent of a number of situations that have happened in the past where we are being fed wrong information and troubling information on the same plate as, you know, Jesus. But what about hip hop though? Because I can be righteous and righteous. I can love motherfucking, you know, Twenty One Savage, but still love Rhapsody. Like that's our love common or any of those positive rappers, right? Yeah, but that's not the same thing as standing up in front of people and trying to tell them that they should go follow a traitorous. Well, that's just stupid. He don't even know what he's talking about. Even when he says things like Republicans freed the slaves, like it's I a, know, but it's, a lot of people don't know that that's not true. I mean, it's. Technically, it's true, but it's nuanced because they had a whole different ideology when they did that. Yes, it's true. However, it is not. Um, it's true, but it doesn't. It it doesn't matter. Like yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't push the. It doesn't push the narrative. It's misleading. It's there. We go. It's yeah. misleading. I just think on a basic note, like, and my son had talked about this on his Instagram. He was like, "This is the most dangerous black man right now." He was like, I just really feel like this is the most dangerous black man because he's hitting us where we, a lot of us, are most um, receptive, which is in our spiritual center, Mm -hmm. and opening that chakra. He didn't use these words, but this is what he was saying. Opening that chakra and other stuff is coming in. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous. That's why there's a separation between church and state. Like, I can acknowledge, like like I said, like, I can name all, I can do all the lyrics to Slava My Knob at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I can, all of them, like, proudly, you know? But at the same time that, <sighs> at the same time that I can quote Zora Neale Hurston. Yeah. You know, and I think that there's a difference between having internal, like, like, Pac always talked about, like, I'm, I'm a contradiction. But mm-hmm. I think that's just humanity. Absolutely. But I think that the presentation of his messaging 
is contradictory. However, it's being presented as if it's not contradictory. And that is what concerns me. Because I think that we, like I said, it all connects. We're in a time where critical thinking is now being seen as treacherous. Literally, people think that me being a critical thinker is me being extra, me being too much. Like, me telling the truth is me being a troublemaker. We've seen that before. Like, we romanticized the past, but there were a lot of people who used to say things like that about, you know, Stokely Carmichael, about Huey P., about Martin Luther King. Like, oh, they stirring up trouble, you know? And it's like, thank goodness they didn't have the internet because they may have felt dissuaded. You know, they may have been like, you know what, I... <laughs> I don't I even want to try and deal with all this. Mm -hmm. But I think with Kanye, I, man, it's just, we are, if we were in an era where I felt like people were more, more inclined to have a more balanced representation of information, I wouldn't feel so trippy about it. Mm -hmm. But we're not. We are in a clickbait era where a lot of sites are more interested in just writing what's going to make people click than what's going to make people think. And so therefore, like, Stuff like this is going to keep going, and I think it has an adverse, I think it's going to have a very deleterious effect, and we we really should be concerned because there's an election coming, and this man is absolutely stumping for this person and doing it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we love you, Amanda. Amanda, we, Amanda know that. we love you. Can we talk about the book before I go? Yes. We, that's what, that's <laughs> what we got. My have bad. I just was like, it. you know. Well, well we have been talking about it because at the end of the day, like, the book is my hilarious and real and direct um version of life advice for anybody that really just wants to level up. Mm -hmm. and and we'll, uh, will this clear up misconceptions about Amanda Seals? Everything we've talked about for the past 40 minutes, do you think reading this book will make people have a better understanding of who Amanda Seals is? If they desire to, yes. If they desire Some to. people are, are like committed to committed misunderstanding. To misunderstanding you. But I absolutely feel like anybody can read this book and get a better idea of my brain and, and my, my heart and my soul. And at the same time, and most importantly, a better understanding of their own brain and their own heart and their own soul and doing it through laughter. All right. Because nope. that's the whole point. Like, nope. my whole shit is like, how can I use these jokes? How can I be funny to get us, like, to a higher plane? And if you're not careful, people will make you, like, trying to come down to their plane to play down there. And it's like, nah, I, you, I got to be up here. I got to be up here and, like, come up, come up, come up, like. And what's been dope is the amount of people who have said to me, like, that this book has made them laugh. It's made them consider. That's my favorite thing. making it Just making you consider, like, maybe I should think differently about this, mm -hmm. you know? Or has made them say, like, oh, like, have an epiphany. Like, oh, I didn't. I was trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. But I have become the patron saint for difficult women. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, women come up to me all the time and are like, girl. Thank you for speaking your truth because every day in my daily life, it'll be teachers. It'll be people that work in corporate America. You know, it'll be mothers. Like, like every day in my daily life, I'm being told that I'm too direct or I'm too harsh. And I'm really just speaking from the heart and I'm just trying to get to the core of things. And they're like, yo, thank you for being a light and a, and a person that is encouraging that because we need more of that and because I want to be that. And I'm just like, yo, like that, that makes me feel good. Because difficult is a very easy word to use and dismiss. It's like when niggas call women crazy. People, niggas love to say she crazy. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah, find yeah. out, mm -hmm. well, what is what what happened? It's like, well, shit, nigga, I would have maced you too. Yeah. Right. You know, so when people say like, oh, man, it's difficult. I always ask, like, just give me the grace of asking my side. At what point do you say I don't give a fuck, though? 40. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two more years. <laughs> You say that until you turn 40. 40 is when I really started giving a fuck. Yeah, but you're a dude. The, the processing is different. You, Every yeah, woman has true. told me, like, girl, I see you gearing up. Every woman has told me, yeah. like, they're like, you're on the right path. Bevy Smith was like, honey, this is it. You're, you're moving. You're getting there. Because it's finding that fine line of what, it's not I don't give a fuck. It's what to give a fuck about. Gotcha. Yes, that's where I'm at with my life right now. Only because what we said earlier, I'm not going to continue to try to make people that are committed to misunderstanding me understand me. I'm not going to do it. And, plus, and, and they don't know what's on this shit. Like this, <laughs> this, social media is literally 3 to 4% of who we are and they've made it our whole narratives. Like literally. Remember when Wax was like, Amanda's cool. Like I thought she would just be yelling all the time. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wax though. That's Wax. That's but Wax, wax has been around you. That's Wax. That's different. He actually knows you. Like we know each other. 
three to four percent of who we are is on social media, and that's what people have to go off, and that's what they use. Well, small doses is out right now. And small it's more, doses. It's, it's way more than three to four percent of who I am. It's it's a hundred percent who I am. It's three hundred twenty pages. It took me a year to write it. It's from the gut, the soul. It's blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and it's, 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 it's going to change people's perception. Of you, I know it is. Books always do. When people actually take the time to read <laughs> books about people, I'm powerful. telling you, I get that shit all the time. People be like, y'all really thought you was a piece of shit until <laughs> I read your books. And then I've been watching the work you've just been doing on yourself. And it's I believe like, that because they come in my DMs and say, I really thought Charlemagne was a piece of shit. And then I yes. read his books. And I'm like, there's art in here. I did all the art in the book. Um, what don't you do? I don't lie. I don't lie. Small doses. It's the breakfast. Amanda Seals. It's Amanda Seals. Go get it.